And there's a couple of concepts that we want to put in place before we start anything really talking about video. And that's this, when not to make a video. A lot of people think that, or they wish, that you could make a video and whoever watches it is going to do what you want them to do. And the truth is, you have to have a plan, and there has to be something in it for the viewer for them to take the action that you want them to take. What's in it for them? That's a very, very important concept that we'll reinforce as we go through that. Now, I'm going to start this talk to give you a little bit of information on how video has helped some businesses that we've been associated with. The first one is Las Vegas Window Tinting. And they came to us when we first moved out here in 2002, and they were one of many, many window tinting companies, and they wanted to differentiate their product so that people would, of course, buy from them. And the way their process worked is they would go out to a homeowner's home, they would measure the windows, and they would give them a quote on what it would cost for window tinting. And their close rate was about 30%. So what we did is we put together a video that showed why their personnel was better, why their product was better, how putting window tinting made measurable results. You could look at ultraviolet light that was cut down. You could look at BTUs. And it was all put into a video. And this slide just shows that they knocked down ultraviolet from 44 to less than one point. And we showed all this kind of information. And now they changed their process that the person who was going out making the estimate, he went, he spoke to the homeowner, and he gave them a DVD at that time on a portable DVD player. And while he was measuring the windows, they watched this DVD. And by the time he came back with the numbers, they were brainwashed. They were already convinced that this was their best choice. And the close rate went up from between 60 to 80%, just with this video solving their problem. The next one I'm going to talk about is Top Chef. Bravo has a program, as probably a lot of you know. It's called Top Chef. And to qualify, you had to send in a video. And this chef, local chef, came to us, and he needed a video. So we produced a video showing how he was different, how he was really a good choice for them to pick. Well, he didn't get on the show. He got in the final round of qualifications. But what he did is he used that video as a video resume. And he put that out to a bunch of places where he was looking for a job. And what he did is he tripled his income just with that video. This is a real good one. Has anybody ever seen Bracelet Buddy? Do you know what it is? OK, great. Bracelet Buddy is a little clip that allows you to put a bracelet on with one hand. And Bracelet Buddy was invented by a nurse in Westchester County, New York, where I lived. And they were trying to get it on QVC. And QVC just didn't get how simple this was to operate. They sent them pictures. They sent them stories. They sent them diagrams, but they couldn't get anywhere with QVC. They came to us. We made a two-minute video, sent it to QVC. The next day, they got a call from QVC because the video showed how this was something that would solve a customer's need, and it would sell. And they sold tens of thousands of these things. And I really don't know how much money they made, but they made quite a bit of money on the video cost them I think somewhere between three and 4,000 bucks. The state of New York. In the state of New York, when a new building is built, as part of the quote required from the state, contractors are required to produce a training video that shows how to operate and maintain the equipment that they're putting in. And the reason that New York believes in this kind of process is that they have a lot of transfers between facilities. 
Uh, the facilities are different. They have attrition. And let's take, for example, a prison. If you're a prison guard, a correctional officer, you want to know how to operate the equipment because you don't want a lot of prisoners walking out in the open, you know? So they had to have training. And what we did is we produced maybe 20 videos for New York State on how you operate and maintain the equipment that's put in various buildings. Now, what this did for the company that hired us, and the company that hired us was the one that put in the equipment, was it got them paid because they didn't get paid by the state for putting in all possibly millions of dollars of equipment until the video was approved. Molycorp. Does anybody know who Molycorp is? Okay. Molycorp's a mining company. A couple of years ago, they were expanding the mine at Mountain Pass, that's on the California-Nevada line, and they were putting in a lot of new equipment and hiring a lot of new people. And they didn't want any of these people to get killed because they wouldn't know how to operate the equipment. So they needed to train on how you operate the equipment and some of the safety processes, for example, log out and tag out, uh, that were going to be used. So they came to us and we put 23 training videos together for them. And nobody's been killed out there, so I guess they were pretty effective in teaching people how not to find and fall into a mine pit. Normally, we'd start with a little bit about our background. But I like to tell you first how video can help you like we did. Our company's been in business since 1987, started in New York, and then in 2002, we moved to Las Vegas. I've done a bunch of things, but uh, I'd like to keep busy, and that's why we're here today. Some of our clients have included Microsoft, Mobile Oil, Verizon, IBM, Samsung. We worked for Samsung last week, as a matter of fact. For Nevada, we did a video on domestic violence so that prosecutor and attorneys could understand all the mindsets and the rationale for why the people do what they do so that they could effectively prosecute. I'm going to give you a bunch of information here. And the reference material and a lot of other reference material is in the DVDs that you're going to get. But let's start. This is a little video. And we're actually going to show you how to do a video like this.
let's look at some of these statistics in a little bit more detail. Websites with video are 53 times more likely to achieve a page one ranking on Google. Well, I'm not saying 53%, I'm saying 5,300, 53 times. Online video accounts for 50% of all mobile traffic. Video is expected to account for 57% of all internet traffic by 2015 in total. YouTube is the number two ranked search engine after Google. There are more than one billion unique visitors to YouTube every month. The average YouTube visitor watches 383 minutes of video each month. Yeah. And I could tell you that I'm probably 10 times that. Just with the videos we create. <laughs> the average user will stay on a website two minutes longer when they watch a video. How is this important? Does anybody know? Have you ever heard of bounce rate? Especially with the latest Google algorithms, the longer somebody stays on your website, the more attractive it is as far as a ranking. For all you shoppers, you know how this works. A video doesn't necessarily have to be a big Hollywood production to be engaging and effective. An effective video provides info the audience is interested in and it shows how to solve a viewer problem. Okay, understand this? What's in it for them? To be effective, to get somebody to do an action you want them to do. Here's some other statistics for you. And these statistics are in general. So the age demographics and stuff like that, uh, they're for general viewing watching. They might not be for business. They might not be for entertainment. They're just taken across the board. But you can see it's a younger crowd. So if you want to attract a younger crowd, uh, just in general, there's a big demographic. And all these are on the DVD that you're getting. What are the most popular videos watched online? And again, this is just general. So if you're attracting a business audience, this is irrelevant. But if you want to do a how-to video, or you want somebody to search your site because they want to learn how to do something, that you can tell them about, they're going to find you. You can see how social networking usage has changed over time from 2005 to today. Big, big difference. Video sharing usage. And I don't want to spend a lot of time on that. I just wanted to give you an overview. Now I'm going to ask you some questions. Do you think people would rather watch and listen than read through an article? Yes. Yeah. yeah, video. Would you be more easily convinced about a product or service by seeing it in action or by reading about it? Yeah. Seeing it in action, video. And I'm going to hammer this in a million times in this presentation, but there has to be something in it for the viewer if you want them to take actions. And from these stats, do you see something in it for a business to use video? All right, let's move into how you really do a video. And I think that was one of the questions. There's three phases, pre-production, production, and post-production. Pre-production. Believe it or not, that's the most important part of a video project. People think you just show up and you start shooting and voila, a video comes out of the process. Couldn't be further from the truth. 
Uh, if you show up, you don't know what to shoot. And if you just start shooting, you get back and you look at your footage and you say, what do I do with it? So pre-production is the most important part. And in this phase, you want to establish what message are you trying to get across to what specific audience? What type of problem does the video solve? In pre-production, you're going to figure out all the necessary resources required to assure the video will accomplish your goals. You're going to de be determining the objective. If you're going to be going out to a location, you're going to want to scout that. Location scouting means you visit it and you figure out where you're going to shoot what. Uh, do you have to clean this office up? Do the people that the person that's making the video wants you to use in it, do they need a haircut? Uh, do they, are, when you meet them, are they in sloppy, unpressed outfits? You've got to get them prepped on all this stuff. You'll figure out the lighting. Like here, we just did something very simple to get some lighting on me so that we could record it. This is a under $200 LED light and about a $150 C-stand, and I'm lit up here. And when we do more elaborate lighting, what we'll do is we'll do what's called three-point lighting, where you'll have a brighter light and a dimmer light that's called key and fill, and you'll have a hair light. This, hair, this light will be behind me, providing separation from the background. And that's the simplest professional type of lighting you can do. You can buy a background stand for 200 bucks, and you can buy muslims from anywhere from 20 to 100 bucks. Sound. A lot of people, when they're doing a video, they make the mistake of assuming that a camera can pick up sound. Well, it can, but it'll sound like it's in a tin can. You know, you, you have to mic people properly. Uh, you can use boom mics. You could use lavaliers. Like, I'm using a lavalier right now, and Lewis is recording me. I'm also speaking into this, so you could hear me. If you're doing multiple people, you got to mic them all. When you plan your video, don't assume your audience knows your subject. Start with an overview of what the viewer will be seeing so their mind can grasp later details. Very important. Tell them what they're going to see. Tell them about it in an overview. Go into the details. And then at the end, tell them what they just saw. And here's something very, very important that people, when, when I see this done wrong, it drives me nuts. If you're going to say it, show it. Because when we first came out here, we saw all these fancy videos, and they didn't match what the people were saying at all. It was like, what in the heck is this? You know, there was like a disconnect, sensory uh, disconnect. If you're going to say it, think about what you're going to use as your visual. Say it, show it. This is an example, and I don't know how well you can see it up there, but this is like a practice that somebody gives us and how we convert it to a script, where you've got an audio column and a video column, and it's say it, show it. And later I'm going to show you a video that is made from this script so that you can really See, just look at the first few sections on this. Are you able to read it? No, no? OK. Uh, the, it says, this video will show a typical lotto sequence. And it starts with a shot of a pump room, wide initial, shot of pumps with locks and tags. So what we're doing is we're defining what the shots are going to be while we're saying the, the voiceover in this case. Here's a short clip from that lotto lockout tagout video. This video will show a typical lotto sequence from start to finish. 
In this scenario, we will be locking out a pumping system to replace a pump. We will demonstrate the steps of the process while showing the devices and forms used. Through the work order job card system, this pump is scheduled to be replaced. Locks and tags are kept in the lockout station in the control room. The process representative collects the locks and tags to be used. Each lock and tag has a number, which will be used where appropriate on the various lotto forms. The first step is for the process representative to fill out the tags for the equipment involved. The tags should be filled out in pencil so they can be reused. The process representative next shuts off power to the pump at the computer. Okay, I'll tell you a funny story about this. We did a uh, location scout. We went out to this, to this mine office and we visited various places where we were thinking of recording. We went to this office that they were planning on using, and it was a mess. And we said, well, you know, this is representative of you guys. You've got to clean it out. So we went there, and they cleaned it up to mine office standards, okay, which was like about like the dirtiest house you ever lived in. <laughs> so you know, we, we spent an hour and a half before we ever started that day just scrubbing that place. The production phase, this is where you actually shoot a video. You may have employees, yourself, actors, or someone else on camera. You'll need a camera and operator, microphones, and someone moder moderate, monitoring sound, proper lighting, and perhaps someone directing and coordinating. Someone also may be keeping track of which shots will be used, the best shots for editing purposes, and referring to the script to be sure all required shots are recorded. If there are action takes involved, no matter how simple, numerous takes may be required till the proper shot and timing is accomplished. Okay, yes, ma'am. Well, usually they don't even know what makes their company different. They think they do. They'll say something like, uh, we've been in business 20 years. It's like, so what? <laughs> what, what, is, what does that do for your customer? If they said, we could show that we've been in business for 20 years and we've uh, had the experience to deal with all kinds of problems similar to yours so that we can solve your problems, well, then there's some relevance to being in business 20 years. And to be real honest with you, that's the major part of what we do. And I've had discussions with Claire and other people about that type of thing. And that's where all the work is, the pre-production. And it may, it may take weeks, it may take months, because you'll come up with some ideas and then everybody's gonna mull it over and it's digested and ultimately you come up with something that's gonna work. And the other thing that we recommend, and we recommend this real strong, the, does anybody know what SurveyMonkey is? Yeah. Okay, use SurveyMonkey on your happy customers. Use them on your unhappy ones too. But from those, you'll really learn what they like about working with you and what you do for them and what problems you solve for them. Because you may think you know what makes you better, but if customers are using you and coming back, that means you're doing something right that they know about. So we recommend using SurveyMonkey. Okay, depending on the type of shoot plan, many other options such as teleprompters, helicopters, jibs, dollies, specialized lighting, et cetera, may be involved. Okay, so it depends the level you want to take this to. We've got helicopters, we've got jibs, we've got everything. Let's move into post-production. We spoke about pre-production, the planning. We spoke about production, where you actually shoot a video. And before I go into this, any questions so far? Okay, good. Let's talk post-production. This is the editing phase. 
Selected takes that you shot are digitized, trimmed, and put together on a timeline within editing software. Animations, graphics, voiceovers, music are put into place. This is where you actually build the video. And here's an example of a timeline in Premiere. This is a five minute video that I'm gonna show you today. And there are 800 video and audio elements in this five minute video. So, for even a five minute video between planning, shooting, and editing, know that it's gonna take many man hours to produce properly. I mean, you can produce something not properly, and it's gonna be a video, but to really do it right, you, you have to spend the time at it. We're gonna move on to technical aspects of video, and I'm just gonna to touch on a lot of this. Video files are measured in bytes and bits. Data transfer is usually measured in bits, and we're gonna get into it in a little bit, but uh, bytes, megabytes, gigabytes, that's how you measure like hard drives. Here's a little chart, which is in the presentation. You've seen KB with a capital B, a small b. Well, this is what it is. A kilobit isn't a kilobyte. A megabit isn't a megabyte. There's eight megabits in a megabyte. Okay, so I don't have to dwell on this, but here's the information for you. You have likely a gigabit ethernet connection, and that's a thousand kilobits a second data transfer rate. File sizes usually measured in megabytes or gigabytes. There's a thousand megabytes in a um, yeah, and a, and a terabyte, and a terabyte, no, a terabyte is a thousand gigabytes. And you buy hard drives such as two terabytes, three terabytes, et cetera, okay? Why are some videos on the web sharper than others? Why is online video usually sharper than video on a DVD? Any idea? Anyone? Okay. Pixels are a major factor. Do you know what a pixel is? Okay. More pixels usually equal greater resolution. DVDs are an old standard from the 90s. And DVD video is usually standard definition. Well, it is 720 by 480 pixels. Blu-ray is 1920 by 1080. So right there, do you see why a Blu-ray is sharper? There's more detail. In recent years, both DVD and Blu-ray discs are losing market share because more and more video is going online. And this is a pretty good representation of pixel size. Let's start with standard definition, 720 by 480. Then let's go up to 1280 by 720. That's a small HD standard. Now let's go up to full HD, 1920 by 1080, and sometimes that's called 2K. And see 4K? How many times bigger than HD is 4K? Anyone? You, you could see it. How many times bigger does it look? It's four times bigger. There's four times more detail in there. Right now, there isn't a lot of distribution or really ways to watch 4K, but the main advantage of recording right now is that fine detail is resolved well, which means if you record in 4K, you can shrink it down to HD, and it's gonna be sharper than if you just recorded in HD. Okay, now, uncompressed raw video is over one gig per minute, and actually it's much more than that. Most office or home computers aren't powerful enough to play that. Due to software limitations, professional editing software is needed for manipulation, and even then the computer may not be powerful enough. 
So what we're saying is in uncompressed video, if you were to capture that, you couldn't play it on anything, not on, not on just your office machine. And this is how you deal with it. You've all heard of MOV files, Windows Media files, MPEG-2, MPEG-4. These are different ways of encoding video. They all lose some data from original acquisition files because they reduce the size of the file. This is done through what is called lossy compression. Instead of having all the data in every frame, some frames are anticipated and some are remembered. The less change your action in a video, the higher the compression ratio can be. So the smaller the file size can be. Here's to give you some examples of file size with one minute of video. ProRes is pretty much the standard for what people call uncompressed. And one minute is 1.6 gigabytes. A YouTube file, the way we encode it, is at about 480 megabytes. And a mobile file, much smaller. Megabits and much smaller. Interesting? Confusing anybody? Are you with me? OK. Data rate is the amount of data per second, for example. 500 kilobits per second is versus one megabit per second. Which do you think, all else being equal, is going to look better? Right, right, because it's going to have more data in it. Uh, the other way that you could change data rate, uh, you can go with full, smaller pixel sizes that, to get your file smaller, but it all depends where you're going to put it. I, I just want to mention this for a second, H.265. Uh, right now with 4K video, it still requires a lot of space, and in my humble opinion, until they come up with a different encoding codec, it isn't really going to be mainstream, though it will be out there. This just shows H.264, which is what is currently being used, versus file size in 265. And this is coming. All right, now we get to the fun. That we just had to cover so that you had a little bit of technical background in this. Solving problems and achieving objectives with video. Here's some just simple examples. People that aren't trained properly, typically they're unhappy. And what happens is they leave, and that's very expensive. Uh, they also don't do a very good job if they aren't trained because they don't know the best practices. They don't know how they should be doing something. So it's expensive to an employer to have improperly trained people. OK, and we've spoken about this in various contexts through this presentation. Your audience needs to understand how your product or service solves their problem, what's in it for them. Understanding how to use a product correctly can decrease returns and increase customer satisfaction. Uh, video tutorial can explain your product or service. And as we showed in the statistics, how-to videos are some of the most commonly watched videos online. You know, again, problem solving. If you're getting a lot of calls on how to do something and it's taken all your time, you can't do any other work, well, you know, you might want to produce a video that shows how to do that process that everybody's bothering you about. How to navigate your website, all the features of it, that type of thing. All right, just a wrap up of that point.
And we've hammered this in a million times, and we're going to keep doing it. OK, now I'm going to show you some videos. And what they had is a specific objective. And I'm going to tell you what the objective was first, OK? In this video, the company was at SHOT Show. And they wanted people to want their product, which was sniper guns, and to just be interested in it and to show why their product was better. And I want you to see if that message comes across here. Hello everyone, my name is Morris Peterson. I'm with Ashbury Precision Ordnance Manufacturing from Rutgersville, Virginia, and welcome to the 2014 SHOT Show. This week, we're here in Las Vegas. We've had a wonderful media day on the range where we've had opportunities to shoot our 300 Win Mag and 338 short barrel guns with Ruag ammunition and our new Savage M10s 308 FCPs and the exciting new SVS chassis. Hi, I'm Matthew with Ashbury Precision Ordnance here at the 2014 SHOT Show Media Day range. We have here our Savage Model 10 in FCP in our Sabre modular chassis system. We were able to engage targets from 100 to 875 yards with a 25 mile an hour sustained wind. It was a great day at the range. Weather was good. The people were great. Ruag ammunition was kicking. Now, we'd like to show you the rest of what we have to offer you throughout the show. Enjoy this presentation. Some of the big advantages to this system are a lightweight and fully adjustable platform, which means that you can set this system up not only for yourself, but for anybody else who's behind the rifle. I would recommend this gun to people who have multiple shooters in the same home. Uh, maybe they don't have the funds to purchase more than one gun. This gun can actually be adjusted to each member with all the integratable pieces there, uh, the monopod to the shoulder pad, the cheek piece, all those things. You can set it up for each individual person and they can uh, shoot safely and have a good day at the range. Every rifle we build at Ashbury Precision Ordnance goes out and gets test fired, not just for function or safety, but also for accuracy. Our accuracy standard is half minute of angle, center to center impact at 100 yards. Every time one of these rifles leaves our shop and goes out to a customer or a dealer, it has its very own test target signed by myself, a shooter, or another shooter with a verification. Being modular, you can pick and choose the components that you need to fit your desire. With your Sabre Multi-Tool, you loosen one Allen screw, change your distance, retighten, and this is better for you ladies and gentlemen that have longer fingers. In the matches that I shoot, we shoot off a lot of different barricades, prone position, and being able to adjust the shoulder stock on it really helps in the different positions that you're in. And another huge plus with this rifle is optics and all, he weighs in around 13 pounds. Looks like it's built for the job. You can run, but you can't hide. I'd say it's probably the creme de la creme of bolt action chassis. I own one of these and I love it. Everybody to a man has just basically raved about the system. Best rifle that's out there. Damn, I want one. I want one. I wish I had one. It's badass. Who wouldn't want this?
you're looking for a precision long range rifle, you want to get into that game, a system like this is really worth a look. I hope you've enjoyed everything you've seen here in our video today. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us at 1-434-296-8600 in the wonderful Commonwealth of Virginia. If you find yourself on the East Coast, give us a call, come and visit. We never need an excuse to get down behind a rifle and put rounds down range. Shoot safely and thank you again. All right, this is another video, and this had a completely different objective. This video was for a company that puts on trade shows. They were the trade show organizer. And what they wanted to do was they wanted to get future exhibitors and attendees to come to future shows. So what they're going to do is they're going to show that everybody's there and they're doing really well, and it would be to their advantage, the people to, that are watching, to be at the next show. Welcome to the 2013 Central Garden Distribution Dealer Buying Show here at the beautiful Mirage in Las Vegas, Nevada. My experience at the show has been remarkable. It's just been awesome. The show's been fantastic. Uh, from the start, when the crowd of people first flooded in, uh, to the constant foot traffic that we've had all day, it's uh, pretty much blown away our expectations. The food's been great. They have all the lounges around and the coffee stations and all types of different you know, food stops and drink stops. And those are great places to network. You get a lot of business done. It's a good way to start off and a good way to keep some momentum going. The speakers that Central brought in were really, really good. They had some specific things that we can take home and use on customer service and social media and things that we can put in action right now. And what I really liked about the sessions is they planned them so it doesn't interfere with showtime. And because that's what we're here for. We're here to buy. We're here to buy so we can make money. The pricing here is great. They can give you phenomenal discounts. We make a very fair margin with the items that we get uh, from the pottery buys because we buy them by the container. So that really helps us out on our margin and helps us to offer a great price point for our customers. Sales are up. Uh, we're seeing a tremendous response from the salespeople. The customers are coming in optimistic, looking forward to getting new products, uh, seeing what we have to offer. And the overall response has been absolutely positive. The Central Show does the best job putting together good show spiffs. They have really good hot buys with different items. This show is a great buying show. I'm always looking for new products, and so it's always excited to see new vendors, new products, and uh, I'm excited about bringing them in for the spring buying season. You can really get a good idea for trends, what's going on in the industry, your reps can help you. I love the fact that their, their reps have been coming around, bringing their customers. You don't see that at every show. You know, just bringing them by and selling my product, and I think that's, that's a huge plus. The sales staff there is fabulous. They work right alongside with the customer to make sure that we understand the customer's needs and how our products fit into their business. They always have something going on. It's not just walking around and seeing, you know, going from vendor to vendor. You get a chance to stop, refresh, take a minute. Central Show treats its customers the best. High quality refreshments. Staff is always friendly. The entertainment's great. You guys put on a first class show. <laughs> It's definitely something different. You don't see it this in many other places. Most of the other shows are somewhat regional, but this gives us a chance to interact with folks from East Coast and the West Coast. My recommendation would be to do the show. Everything's been great about it. I'm definitely looking forward to come back next year. Very much enjoy being with you. Appreciate the hard work and uh, the good business that we all do together. 
and may we keep growing the garden. Thanks for joining us at the Central Garden Distribution 2013 Dealer Buying Show here at the beautiful Mirage in Las Vegas. We hope you join us next year back at the Mirage, August 26th, 27th, and 28th. We'll see you then. All right, I'm gonna show another video. And this is going to be one for a business coach that some of you might know. Do you know Chris Steely, anybody? Yeah. Okay. This was Chris Steely's video that we did, gosh, it must have been six or seven years ago. Chris is uniquely talented and very committed to what he does. The thing that makes Chris a great teacher is his many varied experiences. He has such an eclectic background. I mean, he has an MBA in business, which is fantastic for dealing with business, but he was also a Marine. You know, he also is a world traveler. He's also written books. You, know, you don't find that level of eclectic background in somebody as talented and passionate as Chris Steely. Guys, this is it. It's time to turn things around. I am an idealist. I'm a fundamental idealist. How are you differentiating yourself? To be significant, you have to be different. Be a fractal thinker. Be somebody who thinks outside of that box and be significant. That's how you're going to set yourself a, a, a away from the pack because the status quo is how most people think. Power. Passion. Character. Chris Steely delivers. Chris Steely really has taken all of his experiences and put them into powerful presentations that inspire other people. It's awesome. So you're going to walk out of here with a list of ideals and contrasting what you don't like about that ideal, therefore creating what you do want. Getting paid, who wants to get paid? Who actually wants to make money, right? Chris is absolutely the best at what he does. Chris walked into my office, introduced himself, immediately proved to me that he cared and cared about my success. There is no one like Chris Steely. He is one of a kind. Chris combines everything he's seen and done into life lessons, personal empowerment, and business hints. He delivers them with a unique, inspiring, motivating style. Again, check that ego at the door, realize what you don't know that you don't know, and leverage the brilliant minds that are in this room and that are at your table. Oh, well, what's going to happen next? I've actually heard some people say, well, we're never going to pull out of this decline. This is the big one. This is going to lead us to apocalypse. I'm like, what? Guys, it's a cycle. Business is cyclical. We all know. It really brings dynamics to uh, everything that you thought you took for granted. He reinvigorates you. He's an awesome presenter. The minute he starts, you are uh, on the edge of your seat, listening, waiting to hear what he says next. The key is you get to be inspired to do what it takes to overcome that fear and do what it takes to be committed, like you said you were, to your businesses. As a presenter, Chris Steely is just among the best that you will experience. If you want to develop yourself and your team to the fullest potential, contact Chris Steely today. Okay, there was only one thing I don't like about this video, even though we produced it. I don't think there was enough showing what it can do for people. There were a number of comments where it solved problems, but mostly it was about Chris's, you know, his skills and that type of thing. Okay, I want to move ahead quickly. Optimizing video for online viewing and SEO. You want to show up in organic searches, not sponsored. And all this stuff is in the DVDs you have. Embed, don't just link, get people to go to your site. One of the resource articles you have has all kinds of valuable stuff, and I've highlighted it right there. Here's a whole section on social media.
Okay, here's the video tools, the last that I promised. We use Adobe Premiere Pro for editing. You could use Premiere Elements. There's a bunch of inexpensive software out there, but you need video software to edit. We use After Effects for animations and all those fancy graphics. There's other less expensive things out there. We use Media Encoder, and that's how you make the different Kodaks to put on cell phones and whatever else. We make our music with Sonic Fire Pro. Sonic Fire Pro, you get libraries, and you can adjust the length with a beginning, middle, and end uh, to any length you want. In other words, you say, I want a 30-second, three-frame video, and you just key that in, and that's what that video will be. There's all kinds of other editing software. This is an encoding software that's free, Handbrake. I told you I'd show you what uh, you could do to make videos like that one that's writing. Paltoons, that's another one, and I'm just gonna play that. Okay, this is Real Illusions. You've seen the talking dog heads. I'd, I'd show you that if Claire will let me, but she's giving me the hook over here. So I'll just, I'm gonna play a minute of it and then I'm gonna go out of it. Hey there, shoppers. I'm Jenny the dog. I wanna give you some important information. I'm not talking about where to buy kibbles and bits. I'm talking about getting discounts and cash back with online shopping at shopbest.com Ginny DP. Do you shop online? Two out of three people do, and us dogs do it when no one's looking. It's a doggy dog world out there. We have to save money too, so I signed up for a free membership and toolbar from shopbest.com Ginny DP. I can't even find my tails most days, so what makes you think I can shop online? Okay, that's real illusion. New Tech TriCaster. Streaming, if you're gonna do something, a seminar, or any kind of presentation, why limit it to the people that are there? Extends your audience to more than can physically extend. Stream it, we do seminars. Like something like this, this is a 30 second clip. During this presentation, we're going to discuss the ultrasound approach to the upper extremity veins. Patients with suspected upper extremity DVT usually have clinical findings, most commonly arm swelling that can be seen in 77% of patients. Uh, in two thirds of patients, they may complain of upper extremity pain and certainly many will have tenderness. How about this? Here's a sample taken from the region of the subclavian. Is this normal or abnormal? Additional streaming software, and again, it's all in that handout. SurveyMonkey, we spoke about that. Aerial shots, and I told you, and I know they all want to see it, something with a GoPro. So here it is, a short clip. My face above the water 
My feet can't touch the ground, touch the ground, and it feels like I can see the sands on the horizon at time. You are not around, I'm slowly drifting. Okay, thank you.